On this episode of Philomena.com, I am taking you along as I explore the beautiful country of Ghana. Now, this is not my first time being in Ghana. I often come here in transit, um, but this is the first time I'm gonna take the opportunity to explore Ghana and see it for the beautiful country it is. So join me as we go along on this journey. So when you travel in Africa, things are always going to be a little different than the norm. And I have to share this story with you. The first time I stayed in a hotel, um, I think I was in Ghana, and I walk into my room and nothing's coming on. No electricity, the TV, the lights, nothing. For those of you who don't know, when you come in the room, because we are trying to save energy, you have to put your key card in a slot on the wall, which activates the lights. Now everything is working. Left the mall, really impressed with what they're doing here in Ghana. Uh, from what I hear, this development in Ghana just started happening over the last decade or so. So I hope um, people like us in Liberia can follow this model and start bringing development in the Western world to the west coast of Africa. the start of Kakum Canopy Walkway, it's 350 meters long and seven bridges. Oh god! <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm gonna die, I swear. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Oh my god! This is not my cup of tea! Oh, oh lord! But you, you can't fall if you fall, then what I will do? <laughs> <laughs> let's go man, let's go. Hurry. Because uh, I'm really freaking. So I should hurry? So you want us to run? Oh, okay. Don't, don't. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh-huh. So you see how high you're walking. Oh my god. And you can see oh, no. other users so using the walkway, trying to cross it. And oh. the platform. Hello. And back to the frightened human being. <laughs> My name is Justice Kopina Aqua. Um, I'm a tour guide here in Cape Coast Castle. Uh, and I've been doing this for more than a decade. This structure, Cape Coast Castle, dates back to the 17th century. Um, the English constructed it around 1665, and it took them nearly over 100 years of rebuilding, demolition, and addition before the English came out with something like this. Today, this structure is more than 350 years. 
and historically this land actually changed hands so many times among the Europeans. Um, the thing is the Europeans fought among themselves for this land. They knew so well that whoever occupies this land now controls the gold and the slave trade. And when you control the trade, the basic thing is you'll make money for your company or your country. As I mentioned, this land changes about five times. Portugal, Sweden, Denmark, Holland, England. So when the English defeated the Dutch around 1664, they took hold of this place and constructed a castle. Yet the castle still received attack, attacks from the French. Also, so they brought in the guns, in actual sense, to protect their investment from their fellow competitors. Uh, mainly, this castle was built around the 17th century for the transatlantic slave trade. I say that was a trade of the day. It was lucrative. The trade was booming. So the British constructed this castle to suit that business. Now the Europeans explored North and South America, the Caribbean, the West Indies. They started with the plantation farm, the coffee plantation, tobacco, rice, cocoa, you name them. There were areas that also had mineral wealth, like silver, gold. So human labor was needed. And unfortunately, this part of the world, West Africa, was chosen. Don't be surprised that we are still walking on top of some of the skin cells, the feces, the urine, the blood, the vomit, all that we left. We are right on top of it. We have these called the heads in the leg to see if you remember the struggle, the trial or something. We put them on boats and gradually the boats took them up to the ships and then the ships took them away. So that's how come we are saying that when you go through that door, you will never return. But when you look up again, there's another inscription, see? We had it in 1998, we celebrated Emancipation Day, or Freedom Day. And when we had Emancipation Day around September 98, some of the African descendants in America, Jamaica, let me say Africans of the diaspora, so many of them returned. And interestingly, they returned with two human remains of former slaves who died in America and in Jamaica some years back. So 98, their bones was exhumed, one by the name Samuel Carson, an African-American who lived in New York, and the other was African Jamaican by the name Madam Crystal. She also lived in Jamaica. So their remains were exhumed, shipped back to Ghana. The remains were carried through the store. We had a ceremony for them inside Cape Coast Castle. And after the ceremony, the two remains were reburied again at the nearby town we call as St. Manso. So since then, every 1st of August, we celebrate Emancipation Day in Ghana. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this episode as much as I enjoyed filming it. I had an amazing time on this trip. I learned a lot. Uh, it's always good to go beyond the surface when you're visiting a country. And I learned that lesson this weekend. Um, I encourage you all to visit if you have an opportunity. I look forward to coming back. Thanks to everyone who helped guide me this past week. And as always, thank you for tuning in to Philomena.com. If you are liking what I'm doing, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share the word. And we look forward to seeing you soon at Philomena.com.